Rosemary, this season, what are people going to see that's different about the Fashion Museum here in Bath? Well, we have completely refurbished, I would say well over half, probably two thirds of the Fashion Museum here in Bath. And people will be able to see a whole new exhibition called A History of Fashion in 100 Objects. So we've chosen 100 star objects from the Fashion Museum's collection. And this is what we're presenting to our visitors this season. The first piece, that people will see is a shirt from a man's shirt from 1600s and the most up-to-date piece is our current dress of the year so our current dress of the year is from 2015 and in between times people will be able to see a history of fashion you know men's fashion women's fashion um, so in all of its richness in all of its glory really of course, uh, you've pinched an idea here from the, the British Museum, and, and why not? It's a very effective way, isn't it, actually, to sort of focus maybe on, on the best of what you have. I think you're absolutely right. It's a great idea. And if you see a great idea, well, then, you know, I'm very happy to borrow it, shall we say, or to appropriate it. Fashion is a hugely complex area and our collection, our collection here at the Fashion Museum is at least 100,000 objects. So to try and pull a story, pull a selection out for our audience is quite a challenging thing and hats off to the British Museum, they found a fantastic way to deal with the whole history of the world. And so we've really borrowed that idea. We have chosen these star, star pieces. We've listened as well to what people are saying they want us to present. And people like the idea of having a chronological overview of fashion, but being able to pick up on various sort of different stories. So yes, there are pieces by some of the major names, the major designers in fashion, but equally there are pieces that um, we don't know who they were made by. We don't even know who they were worn by. Um, we're also picking up on men's dress, as well as women's dress, on accessories to dress, as well as main pieces, as main items of dress as well. And trying to find, I guess, a trope or an idea um, to really tie that all together is quite challenging. And, you know, as I say, hats off to the British Museum and, you know, I hope they'll come and have a look at it and I hope they'll, they'll like what we've done with, with their idea. I, I'm not going to ask you to describe every one of those 100 objects, but have you a couple of favourites that you can share with us? And this, I know, is a, a personal point of view. It's always a challenge to choose the ones that you, that you love best, but, but I think this morning, this morning, the one that I love best, I'm, as I walk through the galleries and we're just doing the final preparations for the show now, which opens on Saturday, the one that I keep stopping at um, is this marvellous, rich, saffron yellow dress from the 1760s. Beautiful, beautiful woven silk. It's got metal thread through it. Um, it's got uh, a lovely kind of puce magenta floral design on it. And, it, and it's a sack bag. So it's this graceful style that was fashionable in the 1700s where pleats um, of silk come back or, or really fall from the neck to the floor. Um, and that is absolutely beautiful. And so very, very bath as well, if you think we're situated here in the assembly rooms. Um, and you can imagine how that dress might have looked under the, the candles in the chandeliers here. So I absolutely love that one. And then I walk on through the galleries and walk on through the galleries. And, and, and the next one that stops me, and this, is, this was a great, I, I guess this was a great piece of detective work and a great piece, almost like a eureka moment, because we have a dress, um, really lovely brown, uh, sorry, a, a grey velvet dress that's by the House of Worth. Now the House of Worth was, was always known as, as the first couturier, a Paris couture house. Um, and in the 1890s, they were absolutely the go-to designers. And this is a fantastic dress. But we know who wore it, which gives it that sort of extra personal freeze on. You know, we know who actually chose that dress. Um, and it was a lady called Mary Chamberlain, who was the wife of Birmingham, um, a Birmingham politician, Joseph Chamberlain. And a bit more detective work and a bit more detective work because she was actually painted, uh, she, she sat for her portrait um, in 1890 by Sir John Millet, um, a very uh, a portrait painter, society portrait painter. 
And what we've worked out is the dress that we have in the collection here in Bath is the dress that she's wearing in that very portrait, which is now part of Birmingham Museum's collection. And so we've reproduced the image so you can look um, and see what she looked like in her portrait. And there you can see the actual dress in front of you. So I think it's lovely, you know, again, this is one of the one of the ways that you think about fashion being so complex because it's not just a story about production it's not just a story about weaving that fantastic brocade weave um, in the 1700s it's also a personal story about people choosing what dresses they're going to wear and in what situation they wear them and you know again this is what we're trying to present really to our visitors uh, one little object that um, quite appealed to me was a, a, a parasol a parasol, as I understand it, belonging to one of the suffragettes? Yes, completely. I mean, again, this, this was the, the joy, I guess, of, of the, uh, the idea of the 100 objects, is, is that you don't just have to choose dresses. And what we decided to do was choose this very unassuming-looking red silk parasol um, from 1912, but it has a very, very strong bath provenance and a very strong connection um, to major, major moments of, of world history, of women's history, of political history, because this parasol belonged to Mary Blathwaite, who was a Bath suffragette, and she, um, she lived in, in an eagle house in Bath Easton, just on the edges of the city. And the story goes is that many of her suffragette colleagues would come down to Bath um, for recuperation after they had spent time in Holloway Prison. And I love the idea of it. Well, I don't love the idea because it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's particularly grim that this was what had to happen to women. But the fact that this parasol is absolutely connected to that moment, that key moment in history. And you also, you almost imagine Mary sort of strolling across the water meadows um, in Bath Easton, in the sunshine, with this parasol, you know, just talking and discussing with her colleagues. And those were the women who moved history on so much. And here we have that piece right here in the Fashion Museum in Bath. This is a, a typical chauvinistic point of view from a man. I bet she poked a few policemen with that parasol. <laughs> well, good for her, you know, and that's the joy of fashion, that, you know, it's practical on all kinds of levels, and it is beautiful. I have to say that the shot silk, the red shot silk of this parasol is particularly beautiful, and the way that it catches the light, you know, it just shows you that fashion and style can be found in the tiniest, tiniest, weeniest objects as well. I'm going to coax one more favourite out of you because I know there's a celebrity dress that you particularly like. We have a celebrity dress. Um, I'm, I'm of the generation that, that um, understands the celebrity value of Elizabeth Taylor. Um, in the 1960s, the, the sort of the romance between Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton was absolutely headline news. And we have a dress um, here um, in the exhibition. I think it's actually dress number 80, uh, object number 80, which is, it's a very um, slinky uh, light green dress, which is completely covered in beads. Now, all of this, all, everything in this dress, both the fabric from which it was made and indeed these beads, were, were made of synthetic materials. And it was given to us by an organization called the Man Made Fibers Association. And again, this is another of these dresses that we did a little bit of detective work about because um, it was something that obviously had, oh, it, it, it was a PR exercise really to show that synthetic materials were worthy of um, high couture. And in fact, it's designed by Norman Hartnell, who is the leading British or one of the leading British designers in the late 1950s. It dates from 1958. And I was, um, I spent some time in the archives here um, in Bath, looking at all of the old correspondence about when the, when the museum came to Bath in 1963. And I came across a tantalizing, um, really excerpt from Bath Chronicle in, 19, um, in, in the early 1960s, which said, we have this dress, or we ha a particular dress that was given to the museum by the Man Made Fibers Association that Elizabeth Taylor wore in Moscow in 1958. 
Mm, that sounds very intriguing. So I did a little bit of investigations and we know that Elizabeth Taylor accompanied her then husband Mike Todd um, on a PR exercise for, to promote his film around the world in 80 days. He was a film producer and they, they, they took um, they took the film to a special screening in Moscow in January 1958 and apparently this almost caused a diplomatic incident because they didn't get all of the necessary permissions and so it was all over the press but before they went to Moscow they stopped off in London and I have found a photograph of Elizabeth Taylor wearing a dress which is exactly the same as this dress, as this dress going to the theatre in uh, London in January 1958. And so we thought, okay, so it's a bit like, it, you know, it's the same one. But when we actually mounted the dress, it is such um, a particular shape with a very, very broad neckline. And then I went back and looked at Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And if you look at what she's wearing and that, she has quite a broad shoulders. We also know from when we mounted the dress that it was only worn once because none of the beads are crushed. So I'm fairly sure that we can say that this is the actual dress that Elizabeth Taylor wore to the ballet, to the London Theatre in January 1958. Fantastic. Now look, you've had to do an awful lot of work with limited funds. It's been very much a case of uh, doing what you can with what you've got, hasn't it, Rosemary? But I, I have to say, having briefly looked around, it's very impressive. Well, that's very kind of you, thank you. We've had a fantastic team of, of people working on this. We've, um, we've been very, very fortunate in um, their creativity, their resourcefulness, and indeed the support of Heritage Services and the Council in realising this refurbishment of the Fashion Museum. Um, we really, really hope that visitors enjoy it. The exhibition opens on Saturday the 19th of March and we're really looking forward to welcoming visitors both from within the city and those who visit our city to, 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 to see uh, the history of fashion in 100 objects. Or No, it isn't the history, it's a history. That's really, really important because fashion is such a fabulous subject that you know, everybody's got a slightly different take on it. So this is a history of fashion in 100 objects. <laughs>